Hello, everyone, and God bless. This is Father Mikhail with a different style of an episode for Living Orthodox, and this I intend to be the first in a the first entry in a series of videos on prayer and watchfulness. And I felt it would be important to dive into what is nepsis tonight. What what does this strange uh, Greek word mean? Watchfulness is an ecclesiastical term, and it means wakefulness. It's, a, it's fine and unceasing vigilance of the mind and heart. It also is known as attentiveness or guarding of the intellect. And sometimes in, uh, in patristic terminology, the intellect is referred to as the noose. Uh, the word wakefulness or watchfulness is derived from the verb to watch, which signifies that I am careful, I am alert, I am sober, I am wakeful. Now, in order for watchfulness to be fruit-bearing. It has to be coupled with prayer, and particularly with what uh, is referred to as unceasing prayer, mental prayer, and the, well, in other words, the prayer of the heart. And oftentimes this is uh, a reference to the Jesus prayer. One cannot have mental prayer without watchfulness, and one cannot have watchfulness without mental prayer. We have to realize that the two are inseparable in the work of purifying the heart from the passions, which, of course, the heart is seen as the, the, uh, the place in which the noose resides. And the noose in fallen man is diseased. It is injured and damaged. And without restoring the noose, one is unable to to gain control of the heart. The heart has uncontrollable passions, uncontrollable thoughts a lot of the time. Many people these days struggle with raging thoughts or racing thoughts. And a lot of this is related to the fact that man is not watchful and does not know how to control what enters into the heart and thus what in some cases will even come out. So where is nepsis or watchfulness in the Bible? We see it in Proverbs 4.23 in which the author says, keep your heart with all vigilance. So again, Nepsis is not this strange um, mystical energy that is removed from God. It is not this um, experience like what you'll find in Hindu or yoga, or uh, in. I will even dare compare those last two to charismatic um, Pentecostalism and evangelicalism. It is not something like that. What Nepsis is, is the ability for one to guard their heart from evil thoughts. You know, we see examples of this in the 25th chapter of the gospel, according to Matthew, with the 10 virgins. We have the wise virgins, the, the five wise virgins, and uh, they had oil in their lamps. And in a wonderful book called um, Watchfulness, Themes from the Philokalia, Volume 1, the author writes that uh, the five wise virgins had the oil of love and they had light, the light of watchfulness and prayer. The five foolish ones had neither one nor the other. For indeed, love and watchful prayer are united together and compose a worthy preparation for the bridegroom. But even with ardent, spontaneous, existential love, with all one's soul, heart, and strength, perfect love toward Christ and toward one's neighbor, brother. You still cannot have the light of watchfulness and prayer. Yet without that light, you do not know where you are, where you are walking, where you are heading. You cannot even see your own self, nor your brother, nor the demons, not even the bridegroom himself who comes to the marriage feast. Let us look at what uh, St. Mark the ascetic has to say for us from the Philokalia. The foolish virgins did indeed preserve their outer virginity, yet in spite of this were not admitted to the marriage feast. They also had some oil in their vessels, that is, they possessed some virtues and external achievements and some gifts of grace, so that their lamps remained alight for a certain time. But because of negligence, ignorance, and laziness, they were not provident. And did not pay careful attention to the hidden swarm of passions energized within them by the evil spirits. 
their thoughts were corrupted by this demonic activity and shared in it. They were secretly enticed and overcome by malicious envy, by jealousy that hates everything good, by strife, quarreling, hatred, anger, bitterness, rancor, hypocr uh, hypocrisy, wrath, pride, self-esteem, self-love. St. Mark concludes his meditation by saying, Thus they were deprived of joy of the bridegroom. Because of all these passions of self-indulgence, self unbelief, irreverence, cowardice, dejection, contentiousness, sluggishness, sleep presumption, self-justification, pomposity, boastfulness, insatiousness, prolif uh, profligacy, greed, and of course by despair, which is the most dangerous of all. And so he concludes his, his, um, his reflection on this by saying, Therefore, my son, he who wishes to take up the cross and follow Christ must first acquire spiritual knowledge and understanding through constantly examining his thoughts. St. Paisios gives us uh, more of an insight on how we, can, how we can acquire pure thoughts. And in Spiritual Councils, Volume 2, uh, the person speaking with St. Paisios asks, Yoranda, what is spiritual health? And St. Paisios says, spiritual health equals pure thoughts, an enlightened mind and a purified heart that unceasingly harbors Christ and Panahia. Panahie meaning O Holy, and it is a proper name in Greek for the Theotokos. Watchfulness over ourselves, says St. Paisios, and prayer are a great help in acquiring spiritual health. Prayer is essential for the purification of the soul, and prudence is essential for the preservation of a healthy spiritual condition. Life, of course, is no summer camp. It has joys, but also sorrows. The resurrection is always preceded by the crucifixion. The blows of life's trials are essential for the salvation of the soul, for the soul is refined through them. Just as with clothes, the more we rub them in the wash, the cleaner they become. Even with the octopus, the more it is beaten, the more it is cleaned and tenderized. And the fish, too, appears so graceful when alive and swimming in the sea, or even when displayed in the market with the scales and entrails intact. But it becomes useful only once it is cleaned and made to look less appetizing on the outside, before it is broiled. It is much the same with people. When a person sheds all things secular, his scales, if you will, it may seem, that he is losing his life, his worldly liveliness. But in fact, he is merely removing all useless matter in order to be broiled. Only then is he made useful. Watchfulness, dear ones, is acquired through time. It's acquired through constant prayer and learning how to maintain control over one's thoughts and how to keep a watchful eye over what enters the heart. Some have compared it to the shutting of the doors and the windows of the soul. You know, a, a robber will walk in if the door is left unlocked. But if we learn how to lock the door, when we see someone suspicious coming down the street, and in this case, suspicious thoughts entering our mind or temptations trying to enter into the heart then we develop watchfulness this is what napsis is and it is refined through prayer the more we call upon the name of christ the more he comes to visit us with his grace saint Sophronia of essex said that the most practical means of becoming the temple of the holy spirit is the invocation of the name of Christ. And it is practical because it can always be with us. The name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, is incredibly powerful and it's incredibly effective. It, uh, in the words of uh, Archimandrite Ephraim Trinidafilopoulos uh, in Noetic Prayer, which is one of the latest books uh, produced by Uncut Mountain Press, uh, he says that it incinerates and cleanses all uncleanliness. Whosoever has an attentive heart does not run the danger of demonic delusion. As God's name descends into the depths of the heart, it humbles the serpent that has held the powers of the heart captive, saving us and enlivening us. And so, dear ones, we see that Nepsis, again, to, to hit the point home in this video, cannot be acquired without prayer, 
uh, without a sober and proper understanding of prayer, of how to pray. And I would even dare say it is not possible to have it to its fullest extent without the grace of the Holy Spirit, without being a baptized, chrismated, communing member of the church. This is, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, this is the work of the remission of sins, which is accomplished in frequent reception of the holy mysteries, and of course, in maintaining a vigilant prayer life. And consistency is king with prayer. We should always concern ourselves with maintaining a regular prayer life. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be complex. And in the next video, we're going to go over a little bit more of what prayer is. But in particular, we're going to focus on the noose and noetic prayer. Well, dear ones, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, the style of this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, hopefully next week, uh, around the same time, I will have part two out, uh, which will be on the noose. And then, of course, going a little bit more into what is noetic prayer. Thank you all for, for watching, for listening, and uh, please be sure to like, share, subscribe. Um, prayerfully, please consider uh, checking out my GoFundMe page, uh, where I have a little bit more details on the reason for the fundraiser there. Um, it's not something I like to get too much to into my videos because I want the content to stay focused on Christ and on what it is that I'm trying to teach for this, for, for whatever video it is that we're, uh, we're on. All right. Well, thank you so much. May God bless you and have a wonderful day, evening, wherever you are.